Okay, so 10.8 is a whole bunch of theorem formulas that you're going to have to memorize. So remember when we were talking about all different ways to create angles and we sort of categorize them as inside outside on like if the vertex was inside the circle versus when the out vertex was outside the circle versus when the vertex was on the rim of the circle but all those kinds of angles had names like remember if it was inside the circle it was a chord chord angle um, if it was outside the circle it could be a secant secant angle or secant tangent angle um, we had the inscribed angle if it was on the rim of the circle and in that section we really weren't too concerned with the names of the angles we were more concerned with the location of its vertex so it all came down to inside outside on okay, um, well now we're gonna be a little bit more concerned with the names so these names for example if I have a chord chord what is a chord chord a chord chord is two chords that intersect now I'm not looking to find angle measurements now I'm looking to find segment lengths right so if I have a chord chord and I want to find any part uh, or any segment of those chords it is called mm -hmm. the chord chord power theorem and what that's basically saying do we see how the chords intersect each other oh, there we go um, let me highlight so do we see how vn and sl intersect each other at what point do they intersect each other at e so e is splitting things so what we're going to do is we're saying part one of the first segment so let's say our first segment is the vn the first part of that segment mm -hmm. times the second part of that segment so ve times en is going to equal the first part of the purple segment or pink segment whatever this is times the second part of that segment so part times part equals part times part So part of segment one times part of segment two. Oops, sorry. Part, uh, let's erase this. Let's write this better. Part one of segment one. So part one of segment one times part two of segment two. You'll understand what I mean in a minute. Equals. part one of segment two times part two, uh, uh, part two of segment two. So what does that mean? I'm saying my segment one is the green segment, so part one of segment one is VE. So VE times part two of segment one, so that's EN, so VE times EN, will equal part one of segment two, so that's LE, times part two of segment two, which is ES. So VE times EN will equal LE times LS, or sorry, ES. <coughs> so that's these two is going to equal these two. All right, I'm going to go through the power theorems and then we'll actually do problems using them. All right, so what's this next one going to be? So the first one was a chord chord power theorem, and the chord chord power theorem is made up of two chords. What's this next one? This next one is going to be a tangent secant power theorem. And remember, these power theorems have nothing to do with the angles. What do they have to do with segment lengths? So a tangent secant power theorem is made up of a tangent and a secant. Remember, a tangent only touches a circle how many times? Once, even if you extend it, even if you extend it forever, it will never touch it again. All right, a secant comes from the outside, but then touches that circle how many times? Twice. So this is a tangent secant power theorem. TP is our tangent. 
and RP is our secant. All right, so what does the tangent secant power theorem tell us? It tells us the tangent segment squared is equal to part or I'm going to say outside part, it's going to equal the outside part of the secant times the whole secant. Okay, so looking at our diagram, which segment is the tangent segment? Looking at our diagram, which segment is the tangent segment? Maya? Yeah, remember, tangent only touches a circle one time. Even if you extend it, it never touches it again. So TP is our tangent segment. So whatever that segment is, we're going to square it. Whatever that length is, we're going to square it. And that's going to equal the outside part of the secant. Which segment is the outside part of the secant? Oscar? QP. QP is the outside part. So we're going to multiply the outside <coughs> part of the secant times the whole secant. What is the whole secant? Not RQ. The whole secant is P to R. That's your whole secant. All right, so we did the chord chord. We did the tangent secant. All right, what is this? The secant secant. Guess what? A secant secant power theorem is made up of two secants. All right, so how are we going to find the lengths here? So we're going to say the whole secant. Actually, I like to write it the other way. Multiplication is commutative, so it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to say the outside, outside part of secant times the whole secant equals the outside part of the secant times the whole secant. write this a little bit neater. Yeah, you have to memorize this. So what do I mean here? So I'll look at one secant. Let's look at PD. All right, so I want, um, I want the outside part of PD. What is the outside part of PD? What is the outside part of PD? PC, you got it. So this is going to be PC times the whole secant. What's the whole entire secant? Still looking at the pink one. What's the whole secant looking at the pink one? PD. So PC times PD will equal, so that's this pink section that we just did. Now let's look at the green secant. So now again, we want the outside part. What's the outside part now of the green secant? AP times the full secant. What's the full secant? PB. That's what I mean by outside part times the full. All yes, Maya? Segment lengths. 
So we're going to do problems. They're solving for segment lengths. So remember, inside, outside, on formulas. Remember all those formulas you had to memorize inside the circle, outside the circle, on the circle. Those all solved for angle measurements, right? Like how big the angle was, the degree of the angle. These power theorems all solve for segment lengths. The two have nothing to do with each other. The two have nothing to do each, with each other. So right now, looking at number one, I asked you to find X. Isn't X a segment length? X is a segment length, it is not an angle. So I'm going to look at the diagram and I'm going to ask myself, what kind, what are we dealing with? Are we dealing with a chord chord, a secant tangent, um, a secant secant? Adrian? Um, so I'm gonna need to know that stuff. No. That's not good, but no. <laughs> All right, so what are we dealing with? Chord chord, secant tangent, or t secant secant? Maya? This is a chord chord. So remember, the chord chord was part, I'm shortcutting this, part times part equals part times part. Okay. So I'm going to choose a segment. It does not matter which segment I choose first. I'll choose this purple segment first. So I'm going to say the first part is 3 times the second part of that chord is x. That's going to equal, now let's look at the other chord, the first part of the yellow chord, which is 6, times the second part of that yellow chord, which is 2. So then we're going to have 3 times x is 3x is equal to 6 times 2, which is 12. Divide by 3, x will equal 4. All right, number two, again, you have to know what you're dealing with so you know which formula to use. So the first one, I'll write it out. This first one was chord, chord. What's the second one? What's the second one? Julia. Good. The second one is a secant tangent. And remember, for the secant tangent angle, we're going to say the tangent squared... equals the outside part of secant times the whole secant. Hey, which one is our tangent? Which one is our tangent here? What is it labeled as? Y. Our tangent is Y. So we're going to say Y squared equals the outside part of our secant. Good. The outside part of our secant is 2. The whole secant is not 16. What is the whole secant? It is 18. So y squared equals 2 times 18. So now we're going to have y squared equals 36. To undo a square, can't, don't we take the square root? All right, square root of 36 is not really 6. It is plus minus 6. But could a segment length ever be negative? No, that's why we're rejecting the negative, and we're just going to have y equals 6. Can I go on to the next one? Okay, so we want to find Z. First thing we want to do is identify what are we dealing with. Is it chord, chord, tangent, secant, secant, secant? What is this? Secant, secant. Secant, secant. All right, what is the secant, secant formula? So this is secant, secant. All right, the secant, secant formula tells us to do outside, part times the whole secant equals outside part times the whole secant. All right, 
let's do this yellow secant first. Do we all agree that our outside part is three? And our full secant is Z. Our full secant is Z. All right, what about this pink secant? What's my outside part of the pink secant? Four, and what's the full secant? You got it, the full secant is 12. So I'm gonna have three Z is equal to 48. Divide by three, and we get Z is equal to 16. All right, now we're going to step it up a little bit because it can't just stay that simple, right? So I don't know if you noticed this. What does this say next to it? What does that mean? This was a previous what? A quiz. This was a previous quiz question. So do you think you should know something like this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's go back and look at what we have going on here. I actually have a lot going on here. I have two different power theorems in one diagram. Can somebody identify the two different power theorems we have going on here? Eloisa? Yeah. Close. We got the chord. Chord is correct, and it's a secant, but not another secant. Tangent, you got it. So this is a chord chord and a tangent secant. So now I'm going to look um, to see sh strategically which one should I start with. Do I start with the chord chord or do I start with the tangent secant? So my instinct is telling me go for the chord chord first. So I'm going to look. Here's one chord and here's another chord. And when I look at both chords, what do I realize? There are two different variables. So I have two options here. It will either be a system of equations, or maybe if I do the tangent secant, I could solve for one of the variables, and then it won't be a system of equations. Does everybody see where I'm getting at here? So I'm going to say, let's hold off on this chord chord right now, and let's look at the tangent secant. So here's the tangent, and here's the secant. Luckily, when I look at the tangent secant, I only have how, well, how many variables do I have? One. Just one. If I just have one variables, can I use the formula to solve? Yes. Absolutely. So I'm going to erase a little bit of this so I have more room. All right, so we are starting off with the tangent secant power theorem. So this is going to be the tangent squared equals the outside part of secant times the whole secant. All right, out of everything we have listed here, which expression represents the tangent? The 10, very good. So this is going to be 10 squared is equal to the outside part of the secant. What is the outside part of the secant? Five times the whole secant. Now be careful. This is the whole secant. We're not multiplying. What do we do to get the whole secant? We have to add. So it's going to be five plus nine plus x, which is going to be x plus 14. Was it important that I put the x plus 14 in parentheses? Absolutely, because what do I have to do with that 5 now? Distribute it in. It was so important that I put that x plus 14 in parentheses because now I must distribute in that 5. So we're going to have 10 squared is 100 equals 5x uh, plus 60. Subtract that 60, we have 40 equals 5x, so x will equal 8. Yes? Isn't it supposed to be 70? Did I do something wrong? Oh, I did 5 times 40 is 60. 14 is 16. 60, that's 70. I'm sorry. 
I didn't mean to confuse you. All right, subtract that 70, we'll get 30 equals 5x, so x will equal 6. Are we better now? Okay, I'm not done because I solved for x. What do I need to solve for now? Y. So now I'm not going to use the secant tangent power theorem to solve for y. What am I going to use to solve for y? The chord chord. But now this will work a lot easier for me because now I know x is? Six. So now let's highlight one chord in green, and I'll highlight the other chord in yellow, just to help us focus in on the numbers. So now we're dealing with the chord chord, and for the chord chord, our formula is part times part equals part times part. All right, let's start off with the green one first. So part one is three, part two is y. Let's start now with the, now let's go to the yellow one. All right, part one I will say is nine, part two I will say is, what is it? 11, no, not 11. Part two, six, you got it. So we got 3y equals 9 times 6, which is 54. Divide by 3, we get y is equal to 18. Did we solve for x and y? Yes. All right. Number five, tangent, tangent segment PT measures eight centimeters. The radius of circle R is six centimeters. Find the distance from P to the circle. All right, let's go ahead and label what we know. Tangent segment PT measures eight. So I'm going to go to PT, and I'm going to say this is eight. And then they say the radius of circle R is 6 centimeters. So I'm going to draw the radius. Where do you think I'm going to draw the radius to help me out? From R to where, Scion? Good. From R to T is going to be 6. But when a radius touches a tangent, what do we know? It's a right angle. Good. When a radius touches a tangent, we get a right angle. So we want to find the distance from P to the circle. When they say to the circle, they do not mean the center of the circle. They mean the rim of the circle. They want that. Right? So as of right now, there's absolutely no reason I can find that. But hold on a minute. If I were to draw the segment from R to P, can we find PR? Yeah, what is this? A uh, three, four, five times two. Isn't this a triple times two? So what is this, six, eight, 10. And don't we know that the radius is six? So if this is six, what is P to the rim of the circle going to be? Four. four. So I used an older theorem to solve this. I used the fact that when a radius touches a tangent, it makes a right angle, and then I used triples. There, we could have done this using a power theorem. How could we have done this using a power theorem? Let me show you. So they told us PT was eight. And I liked, I wanted to draw R to T to make a right triangle because we're sort of instilled to create triangles or create right angles, right? But let's say you just drew from P to R. You would say, okay, well, isn't this, if I extended this, wouldn't this be a tangent secant? Right, so I know that from here to here is a radius, so that's six. And from here to here is a radius, that's another six. And they want from P to the rim of the circle is X. Can I use the tangent secant power theorem here? Absolutely. What would we have done? We would have done the tangent squared equals the outside 
of the secant times the whole secant. The whole secant is x plus 12. Okay. It would have been a little bit longer, but it still would have worked. No, I would actually be really pleased if you did it the quicker way and brought in the old theorems. All right, what do I want you to do? I want you to do number six and number seven, but before you do that, I'm going to do number seven with you. Oh, the second number seven. <laughs> the second number seven I'm going to do with you. So here we have BE is 2X minus 1, AE is X minus 2, CE is X plus 7, and ED is 4. The reason I'm going to do this one with you is because you are going to have no choice but to factor. And there will be something like this on your quiz when we get there. So you want to make sure you know how to do this. And at this point of the year, I really hope you know how to factor. Okay, do we all agree chord, chord? Yeah. Part times part equals part times part. So we're going to start off with the yellow one, the yellow chord. So I'm going to say 2x minus 1 times 4. I put the 4 in the front just because it looks better to distribute that way. And then I'm going to have x minus 2 times x plus 7. I'm going to distribute in the 4. So we're going to have 8x minus 4. And now you're going to double distribute or FOIL or whatever it is that you called it that you used to do in Algebra 1. So I'm going to have x squared times 7x minus 2x minus 14. So we have 8x minus 4 equals x squared. I'm combining my like terms on the right side. So I have x squared plus 5x minus 14. In order to factor, what must it be set equal to? 0. So I'm going to subtract the 8x under the 5x, and I'm going to add the 4 under the 14. The right side all cancels out, and then I'm left with x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Now I can factor. Now I can factor this. So we're going to have what multiplies uh, to negative 10 but adds to a positive, I'm sorry, negative 3? What multiplies to negative 10 but adds to negative 3? Kyle? Uh, negative 5. You got it. So we're x minus 5, x plus 2. A lot of you still, when you're solving, think your answers are negative 5 and 2. Your answers are not negative 5 and 2. Why? Yeah, these are the factors. Now we have to solve them. So x minus 5 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0. So x equals 5 and x equals negative 2. You are allowed to have a negative x. What are you not allowed to have? A negative segment when you plug in. Um, can you have a zero segment if you plug in? No. So right here, um, if oh, well, let's do the negative 2. If I do negative 2 minus 2, isn't that negative 4? Can I have that? No. For that reason, I am rejecting the 2. For that reason, I am rejecting the negative 2. So now we just have x equals 5, and it said solve for x, so that's my only answer. All right, you guys go ahead now, and you're going to try um, independent 6 and 7.
six looking do we need another minute for number six or can we go over it all right so I've given some extra information here it says T is the midpoint of QS never forget our vocabulary what does it mean if T is the midpoint of QS good that means QT and TS are congruent so I mark that then it says all uh, sorry then it says PT is eight so this segment right here is eight and all of QS is 40. Well, if all of QS was 40 and T is the midpoint, doesn't that split that into 20 and 20? All right, we want um, to first find TR. So let's call um, TRX right there. All right, do we all agree this is a chord chord? So remember, part times part equals part times part. So I'm gonna have, let's go for uh, PR first. The first part of PR is eight. The second part of PR is X. Then let's look at QS, part times part equals part times part. So we have 20 times 20. So we have eight X equals 400. So X is equal to 50. All right, what does that mean? That means this whole thing is 50. So now they're saying, well, TR is 50. What is the full diameter? Well, isn't the full diameter, diameter P to R since it goes through the center of the circle? So the full diameter is not 8. It's not 50. It is... 58. All right, let's look at number seven. So for number seven, PT is three, QR is eight, and we want to find PQ. Does anybody want another minute to finish this before we go over it? Raise your hand if you need another minute. Okay, what kind of paratheorem are we dealing with this time? What is this called? Good, this is the secant tangent. So remember, it's the tangent squared equals outside part of secant times the whole secant. 
So our tangent is 3, so 3 squared equals our outside part, with this, which is x. What is our whole secant? Our whole secant's not 8. Good, our whole secant is x plus 8. So we're going to have 9 is equal to, I need to distribute the x. x times x is not 2x. What's x times x? x squared. x times 8 is 8x. I am going to have to factor. But before I factor, I must set it equal to what? 0. So I'm going to subtract that 9. So we're going to have x squared plus 8x minus 9 equals 0. So I now need two numbers that multiply to negative 9 but add to a positive 8. What are my factors? Cyan. X plus 9 You got it. X plus 9 and X minus 1. Are my answers 9 and negative 1? No. Now we need to set them equal to 0. So we're going to have X plus 9 equals 0. X minus 1 equals 0. X equals negative 9 x equals 1. Why am I right away rejecting that negative 9? Because you can't have a negative segment length. And doesn't x represent part, uh, segment length? So right away, I know I can reject that negative 9. So my only answer is x equals 1. A lot of you just want to stop there. If I say find x, then you're good. But what did I say? Oh, I did say that. All right, I said find pq, which is just x, so that is 1. But let's say I asked you to find pr. What would be pr? pr would be 8 plus 1, which is 9, exactly. All right, we are done for today.